Now, if you've amassed a fortune and become a billionaire like Virgin Boss Richard Branson, you've probably got a head for figures. And Sir Richard, who's just announced he's going into space next week, could be forgiven for musing on one number in particular right now. The odds of dying as an astronaut. They're currently around 1 in 25. So what on earth could possess a man about to turn 71 with, amongst other things, his own private island on which to while away retirement to risk everything. The same could be said for another billionaire, the world's richest man, Jeff Bezos, who's not only putting his neck on the line this month, but has persuaded his brother, Mark, and an 82-year-old woman, the rather brilliantly named Wally Funk, to join him aboard the first manned flight of a Bezos rocket. What is it with these people? When most retirees are settling into cardigans and installing stairlifts, these pensioners are zipping into spacesuits and lifting off into near-Earth orbit. Where some can afford a cruise around the Med, the super-rich, it seems now, aim higher. It's wonderful, of course. What chutzpah, what cojones to risk everything like this. It would be easy for Branson and Bezos, having come up with and funded the ideas, to let others put the ideas into practice. But no, they are determined not just to talk the talk, but to walk the spacewalk too. The test flight of Virgin Galactic's winged rocket has been two decades in development. It will be Branson's first trip to space, and the first time his Unity spacecraft has carried a full crew of half a dozen. An earlier Virgin prototype broke up seven years ago, killing its co-pilot. Branson's updated version will launch from New Mexico on July the 11th, beating Bezos into space by nine days. These margins matter. If all goes well, VSS, Virgin Spaceship, Unity, will piggyback on a larger aircraft before firing its rocket and reaching an altitude of 55 miles. Jeff Bezos will aim a little bit higher. His Blue Origin New Shepard rocket will be 66 miles above the Earth. Both heights are considered to be the edge of space. Those on board will enjoy if that's the right word, a few minutes of weightlessness and a view of the curvature of the Earth. In this battle of the billionaires, one man is currently ahead, however. Elon Musk has sent several astronauts into space proper, in other words, into orbit, but he currently has no plans to go into space himself, at least not on the earlier, riskier missions. Musk has hinted he might join a Japanese billionaire who's bought seats on a SpaceX mission to the moon, come 2023, but is otherwise quite cagey. Once, when asked if he'd fly to Mars on one of his own craft, he joked, I'd like to die on Mars, not just on impact. Retirees like Branson and Bezos may have the right stuff, but Musk has an instinct for self-preservation. Perhaps it's because he's only a nipper. Musk turned 50 earlier this week. We're well, joining the studio, the space journalist, author and presenter, Sarah Crodas, who's here that was quite long, wasn't it? That was quite a long introduction. I'm just going to start by clarifying some of the errors within that introduction. You know, one in 24, you're looking at NASA and Soyuz figures. Yeah. So if we take errors the is a with... harsh word. Yeah, yeah. The, okay, well, no, fair. but it's Go important. Yeah. STEM, STEM literacy within the media yeah. is important, particularly yeah. with yeah. the last year we've had. It is, it's so important to get this right. And yes, 0.32% of all astronauts have perished. They have. However, these are space. vehicles which haven't. You're looking at figures from different vehicles, so you can't manipulate those numbers on that materials, on, on those vehicles. It's hardly it's, safe. Of course it's not safe. And, and high risk comes high reward. This is not a case of billionaires going into mm. space just for ego. This is about exactly what we've done on Earth. We've explored the Earth. Governments went in first. Government yeah. funded exploration. Then private industry. It, while you're at it, any more errors you need to clear up? Well, you know, I, I wouldn't call Jeff Bezos a retiree either. And I certainly... He's in his late 50s and he's yeah, quit they, Amazon. How he's quit old Amazon. are you? How old are you? I'm 53, but I've got, to keep I've got six children. He, he doesn't have to keep working. <laughs> he doesn't, but I think he wants to. But, um, you know... Any more? Just no, that's it. That's it. That's it. Right, okay. I, yeah. I just, yeah. you know, it's good to get things right when we're talking about science yeah. stories. But um, we are doing exactly the same as what we've done on Earth. Governments went first. You know, Christopher Columbus, funded by the Spanish King and Queen, went and yeah, discovered and now the people are revising that, that Sarah. Aren't they? People revise that. And where, when I was growing up, age fifty-three, I'll, I'll mention it again. <laughs> thanks a lot. Uh, you know, you it, it, was un, it, was, it was unambiguously positive to be an explorer, to be a coloniser. Was, was a positive. Now it's slightly more equivocal, to put it kindly. Well, I'm not going to go down that route with that, this particular thing, but what we're doing is no different in the sense that governments go first, private industry then follows, and that's exactly what we're seeing with space exploration. So, yes, I can understand why it's frustrating to all of you sat at home that you're seeing billionaires going to space not, after no, the you, year... No, you well, I think it's fantastic. Well, but some people think, find it Well, no, I don't. And I argue, I've, got a, I've got a friend of mine who says, look, why, 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 willy-waving, billionaires, why is the money not being spent on curing malaria? A, 
they've created this money from NOT. B, they pay their taxes. They've created thousands of jobs. And in the case of Elon Musk, uh, here is somebody who is thinking really hard well, this about is, the this serious is the problems point facing I, the species. I'm coming on to make. And it's we, not being... Well, I'll let you we, know. We, you know, it's easy for some to say, this isn't going to benefit us. How does it benefit us? But actually, so much of what we do in space is about Earth. We are this one tiny planet in this one solar system. Why not have a plan B? Why not have a plan B? Well, it's not even a plan B. Why wouldn't we want to explore? Why wouldn't we want to know what's out there? And government can only take us so far. Government can only take risks so far. Governments have to be more conservative with their risks. But when we're looking at private industry, they can take the risks that governments can't do. They can, you know, risk with technical, you know, not just risk of life, but risk with technical designs, risk with everything to push humanity forward. We have, we're all living in a time, uh, you know, 100 billion humans have existed in the entire history of our species, but all of us today are living in a time when going to space is no longer science fiction. And what we're witnessing in the coming days, this month, is two human beings who've yeah. made a lot of money, built their own rockets, and now they're travelling to so space exciting. for those rockets. It's so rockets. exciting. I mean, you know, because, as you hopefully, Sarah, point out, I am 53, that meant I, 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 was, I, growing, I was growing up, you know, building the Saturn V <laughs> Airfix models with the telescope, got bored of that quite quickly. But, but being told that actually it would be holidays in space by the year 2000, that turned out to be on a dull traded top. We, we jumped into cyberspace instead of outer space, so we got the world of cyberspace. The generation inspired by Apollo with the Musk, the Bezos and the Bransons. They, yeah. they made their money in the internet. They, they made a future, they created a future we didn't even imagine. And now because of that future, because of the money they made from that future, mm. they're now able to create the space future. So we didn't get it wrong. We got yeah. the timing wrong and it's happening now. And there's so much to come from it. There's the opportunities from people from all different walks of life to eventually go to space. It's comparable to aviation 100 years ago. Do you, think, you really think it is? Of course it is. You can never have an exact analogy, but it is comparable. That's the closest thing. And you get the wealthy goes first, you get yep. more accidents, there is that risk. Yep. But it becomes safer, it becomes more commonplace. And I'm very aware that not everyone's been on an aeroplane on our yep. planet. However, it becomes something more and more able to experience. And what I will say in space exploration is if we're going to succeed, we're divided by a lot of things on Earth, but if we're to succeed in space, we need to send people from different walks of life. We need to send people from different countries, people who are businessmen, people who are lawyers, politicians, soap stars, whatever, because when you go to space and you get that view, you're only up there for 15 minutes with Bezos and um, mm. with Branson. It's literally up and down. Yeah. You experience the view of the Earth, a view fewer than 600 human beings have taken in, and you see... Oh, we know it's profoundly affected some Yeah, and, and how will you relate to your community in a way that a military personnel man, or, or how would you feel... Can we just, there's a picture of Branson there, 71 in space. He's not 71 yet, but he's nearly 71. I mean, uh, uh, and we know that Bezos is taking an 82-year-old woman who was part of the original Mercury space program. Yeah, Plus she, she was a woman, she couldn't go up. I mean, physically, are there, is there an upper limit on age? Not really with these commercial space flights because they are so short, these missions. You literally are going up and down, so there's less of the training. If you were going to go to the International Space Station, or say for six months, like most NASA or um, ESA or Russian astronauts do, you need psychological tests, you need physical tests. You can't just ring a doctor. But if you're going on such a short flight, as long as you can withstand the G forces, which aren't much more than a roller coaster, then you're, you're good to go. It really is transforming space from something which is so niche to something that an 82 year old woman, someone, Wally Funk, wanted to be an astronaut in the 60s. She couldn't because of the situation as it was in the US in the 60s with women going to space and women flying fast jets. Imagine someone going in a time machine and going back to her and saying, when you're 82, a billionaire who made his money on something called the internet will pay mm. for you to go on a trip in his rocket that he built yeah. himself. I love it. I love it. I love it.